Friends, this is part two of a Clock Prophecy update for September 23rd, 2018. Well, it was two years ago this month that we reached 6 a.m. on the clock and began to watch for the last total lunar eclipse of an 80-year generation. That eclipse will take place just 120 days from now on January the 21st, 2019. We will arrive at the last Feast of Tabernacles of this 80-year period just 21 months later in early October of 2020. Will the darkening of the moon on January 21 of next year be the one Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24? I believe it may well be, in which case the events of Revelation chapter 13 and the seventh seal may begin in just a matter of weeks. Our focus has been a near-fatal head wound to the first beast, identified on the clock as Barack Obama, and the rise of the Antichrist out of Europe, identified on the clock as the future king of Britain, the firstborn son of Princess Diana, Princess w Prince William Arthur, the Duke of Cambridge. This is based on the divine mathematics of Scripture as revealed to me during a visitation of the Lord Jesus Christ in my home in the spring of 2010. See chapter 6 of my book for the mathematical proof of these identities, as well as that of the false prophet and the true meaning of 666. Is President Trump facing a level of treason that goes beyond what we have already seen? I believe so. I also believe that Trump is a catalyst for the head wound that disables Barack Obama before his restoration to power. I'm not saying that the president himself will be responsible for this event, but it could be seen as an act of retribution or claimed to be an act of retribution by his supporters if the Trump presidency becomes more seriously embattled in the days ahead. In fact, I believe that the British government itself may orchestrate the assault on Obama in order to use his image as a banner under which to elevate the European Antichrist to power. It makes sense that the British would want to intervene in U.S. affairs once it becomes clear that President Trump cannot be stopped. Why? For one, Europe holds the majority of global wealth, and as Trump's policies wreak havoc on their globalist agenda, they will be forced to act before the Antichrist can rise to power. We can see that Trump is being used by God to move us closer to the war of Psalm 83, when a confederation of Muslim states bands together to destroy Israel. Turkey has come under extreme pressure due to sanctions by the United States, and this threatens to weaken President Erdogan and his desire for supremacy in the region. Turkey is named among those nations that come against the Jewish state at the end of time, and Erdogan knows that his time to make his move is running out. We can be sure the globalists in positions of power in America are not alone in their desire to see Trump deposed before 2020. The outcome of our 2018 midterm elections may well push allies of the beast system in the U.S. and elsewhere to make their move. At that point, we will have arrived at critical mass on the clock. Remember, it is God who is marching Satan down the plank of end-time prophecy, not man. The kings of the earth are under a divine directive, and whether they know it or not, their actions are being orchestrated by God to bring us to the end of human government on earth and the start of the divine rule of Christ. We are all running out of time. There is one remaining discussion of the timeline that pertains to years of jubilee since the birth of Christ that we need to cover. I want to talk about how this could move us to critical mass in early 2019, or as late as the spring, because of how these dates converge over a window of time of approximately three months. As always, the key is how biblical measurements of time link to our Gregorian calendar, rather than reliance on the modern calendar alone. I searched through my updates here at the website to see if I had previously shared the significance of the 41st Jubilee of Sabbaths with my reader, and I found that I had not. Why is this important? It is important because in the vision shown to me in which North Korea's Kim Jong-un perished, I was also shown Obama's near-fatal head wound at the beginning of the seventh seal. In the same scene, I found myself in a large building, inside an elevator, and it was inside this elevator that I came to a sudden stop at the 41st floor. Almost immediately after, a great explosion engulfed the building in flames as two stars came into contact with the earth. 
I have no doubt that these two objects are those depicted in Revelation chapters 8 and 18, described by John as the second and then a third trumpet of the seventh seal. The first of these two objects apparently does the greatest damage. However, the second object appears to signal the rapture of the man-child in Revelation chapter 12. I believe we are also being shown a rapture event in chapter 18 when the bright light uh, comes over the earth and the great city, which is the Vatican, which is Rome, is taken out. It's the same impact. And in that same passage in chapter 18, God says, come out of her, my people. I believe that will be a rapture event out of Europe at that time for those of you who, who are in Europe. The man-child is uh, the first fruits harvest of a Jewish remnant from each of the 12 tribes as stated in Revelation 7, 4, 12, 5, and 14, 4. I understand this to be the first of three raptures. See my article on the four-part harvest uh, from the main page of the website to understand this. It appears uh, that this will occur during the War of Psalm 83, the early rapture, after which a much larger catching up takes place at the sixth trumpet, perhaps during the spring of 2020. I have been struggling for many years to try and place all of this into our modern timeline, and I believe this update may provide you with the end result of that very long search. It appears to me that YouTube is shadow banning uh, my viewership. I have over a million views, and I have videos with up to 300,000 and more uh, views, and many videos with uh, you know, 30 and 40,000 views. Um, and yet, with this uh, latest upload of part one, I'm getting a very, very tepid uh, view, view count on the video. So I need you to help me to uh, spread this message because it's the only divinely revealed calendar specific uh, end time message that I know of other than people offering uh, you know, their uh, considered opinions and views and speculation but the clock did not come as a result of my uh, trying to devise a timeline. And even though I don't know the day and the hour of any future event, this uh, prophetic message, which is the clock prophecy, is the closest thing that we have to actually knowing uh, that the fall of 2020 may, in fact, be the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, if the countdown in our final generation began with the Lord's birth as I believe it did or I should say as the countdown uh, of the 41 jubilees began with the Lord's birth not the final generation then the concluding jubilee would capture his divine coronation at the start of his rule over the earth from Jerusalem near the end of the final generation which is what I was trying to say as we are about to see such a convergence in time does indeed point to his return at the end of an 80-year generation by the fall of 2020. Now, we have good reason to believe that Jesus was born in the year 3 BC. And the reason for that is because the planet Jupiter moved in a rare retrograde pattern over Palestine that year to become the star of Bethlehem, seen by the Magi, which allowed them to find his birthplace. The date on which Jupiter came to be the most radiant over Jerusalem in 3 BC was during the week of tabernacles on the night of September 11. We need simply to count 41 sabbatical jubilees from se September 11, 3 BC, using the 13-month Hebrew calendar based on the lunar cycle, meaning we must count forward using a 360-day year, as Daniel did, rather than a 365-day solar year, which none of the prophets used. We must then convert the result using solar years to arrive at our place on the modern Gregorian calendar. How many modern day prophecy, Bible prophecy teachers are using the lunar calendar as Daniel used it? I don't know of anyone that does, but I could have overlooked it. I hope there are some out there. Here is the calculation. We're looking at September 11, 3B, 3 BC, plus 738,000 days, which is the 41 50-year jubilees using the lunar cycle, which brings us to April 7, 2019. 
This date in 2019 appears from my research to be the same date on the calendar as the Lord's resurrection almost 2,000 years ago. Of course, that date on the Gregorian calendar did not exist at that time. But I believe that was the spring and that that was the date relative to our solar way of counting when Jesus was resurrected. Below you will find a graph depicting the convergence of this date in 2019 with dates already discussed in my uh, earlier message showing the final total lunar eclipse of an 80-year gener generation just weeks earlier. It also shows the result of a 630-day or 21-month reverse count from the date of Tabernacles in 2020 to reflect the time value associated with the 101 verses that describe all the events of the seventh seal. Does the chart here give us reason to believe uh, that 2019 will bring the meteor I have discussed at length in past updates? I believe it does. This object and the one following it may well strike the Earth between January 12, 2019 and April 7, 2019 to confirm the opening of the seventh seal just several months from now. Consequently, with this message, I am issuing the strongest possible watch to date in our progression to critical mass on the clock. See the last video, or part one, of this series, and uh, also my written update at the website for the trifecta of Bible prophecy that will mark the opening of the seventh seal, possibly as early as early 2019. God bless as you continue to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Behold, I come quickly. This is Peter John Brandle.